Hi, this is Mike Wardinsky with NatureMike.com, and welcome to the Lightroom Secrets Revealed Video 1, the library module. In this video, I'll show you some of the most overlooked and hidden features in Lightroom Classic. First, I'll show you how to customize the look of the interface, and then we'll dive into some of the lesser known features of the Lightroom library. By the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of Lightroom as a whole, and you'll have a few new tools to help enhance your workflow. So let's dive in. So here we are in the Adobe Lightroom Classic interface. And the first thing I want to tackle is just a little bit of cosmetics. On the left hand side here, where it says LR Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic, we can actually change that text to whatever we want. We can even put in our own logo there if we'd like. In order to do that, simply go up to Lightroom Classic and navigate down to Identity Plate Setup. From there, we're going to click on these little arrows and drag down to personalized. And at this point, we can type in whatever we want. So I might do naturemike.com, put my, my website in there. And then I can go ahead and change the size of the font. I got a highlight here. So I can change the, the size of the font and even change um, the font that I want here. I already saved a custom identity plate though. So I'm just going to come up here and just click naturemike.com. And then there it is. You can also change the size and font of your module text as well. And once you're done, you just press OK, and there you go. It's changed in real time. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to speed up Lightroom's performance. Lightroom's constantly writing information to the catalog file. Over time, that starts to slow your catalog down, so you have to optimize it. In order to do that, you simply go to File, Optimize Catalog. And you click there, and it tells you the last time I optimized, which is fairly recently, um, but we're, I'm just going to go ahead and click Optimize anyway. And this could take a few minutes, so go ahead, get yourself a cup of coffee, take the dog for a walk, and then come back. It could be five, could be ten minutes, depends on how much work it has to do and how big your catalog is. And so how often should you do this? Probably about every two weeks or so. Go ahead and just go up there and click Optimize Catalog just to make sure it's running as efficient as possible. You could even do it every week if you wanted. Lightroom has a built-in feature to help you call your photos. Um, now I'm going to give you a little bit of a disclaimer here. I don't typically use the Refine Photos feature. Um, because I have my own method that involves these little star ratings. Um, you can see down at the bottom of the thumbnails here. But I will kind of explain how this works really quickly, um, just so you can see. It might work in um, some people's workflows. Um, again, I just don't like it myself. Um, but if I click on a thumbnail, I can press the P key, or just click up in the top left-hand corner and click that little um, flag that's called the pick flag. So that's basically a way to choose your favorite photos. So I got a few selected there. I'm going to now go to Library, Refine Photos. And what this is going to do is it's going to take any photo that doesn't have a pick flag and mark it with a reject. And then any pick flag photos, those picks are going to go and it's just going to become an unflagged photo. So here we go. Let's, let's try this out. And there we are. So the reason all of the other photos disappeared is because Lightroom automatically checks these two little flags down here in the toolbar, the, the, check, the pick flag and the unflagged icon. And so basically that allows me to go back through these photos. I'm going to press the E to get into the loop view here um, and refine them even more to my favorites. So maybe that one. So now I got three more picked. Now it's pretty easy to see with just seven photos which ones are my favorites just by kind of clicking here. But imagine I had 50 or 100, it could become a little overwhelming. And so now that's where this feature comes in handy. Go back to library, refine photos, and I'm now down to three photos. And maybe at the end of the day, I decide that I like this one. And I had a, had a little pick flag there. I like that little, little swirl coming in in the water. Now I haven't deleted my photos just yet. If I go back to filter and I turn these flags off, I can see I still have all of my photos there. They were just hidden because of the filters Lightroom had chosen. Now, the reason I don't necessarily like this is because 
I have all these X'd boxes, and if I were to hit the delete key, I could potentially delete them all from my library accidentally, because maybe I don't want to edit them right now, but maybe someday I want to come back and work on them and look at them, and if, you know, space is, is cheap, so I don't necessarily want to delete all those photos. So anyway, there you have it. That's um, refine photos in a nutshell. If I want to unmark all these photos, I, I can Command A to select all, press U, and they all become unflagged again. When doing some routine housekeeping in Lightroom, it can be helpful to know if you're missing photos or not. Ideally you don't, but maybe you have some photos that were on a different drive and that drive crashed or um, it's just not plugged in. Um, so there's a way you can do this very easily here. So if we go to Library, Find Missing Photos, and just click on that. And it's gonna, a little progress bar up in the top left hand corner, it's gonna do its thing. And then when it's finished, it's gonna show you any file that isn't currently connected to the computer, or at least Lightroom doesn't know where it is. And you'll know that by this little exclamation point here. And you'll see it's in every single uh, corner of, of every thumbnail. Now I have a lot here because I know one of my external drives is not plugged in to this catalog. And so that's why these all showed up. And what Lightroom does is it adds a missing photographs folder underneath your little catalog here on the left hand side when you're in the library module. Um, so that way you can always go back to this. And if you ever want to update these, these photos, say you, you found the drive that the photos were on, you plugged it in, and you want to update it, you would just go back to library and choose find missing, all missing photos again, and it would update this number here. Lightroom has a way of checking the integrity of your DNG files, also known as digital negatives. And the DNG is sort of a, an Adobe standard file format. Uh, you can convert your raw files from your camera to DNGs. And also anytime you create a panorama or HDR image within Lightroom, that by default becomes a DNG. Up in the library panel, if I come down to validate DNG files, what this is gonna do is it will scour my catalog and make sure that there's no corruption happening in any of those files. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this. And it's gonna take a little while, so we're just gonna wait for that to finish up. Again, one of those moments where you can go take the dog for a walk. And I'm just gonna fast forward this a little bit. Once Lightroom finishes validating your DNGs, you'll get a dialog box letting you know if you had any errors or not. Um, press OK, and that's it. Photos on your hard drive can sometimes become out of sync with the folders in your Lightroom catalog. One reason this could happen is if you drag some photos into a folder without importing directly into Lightroom first. Another way it happens is if you bounce between Lightroom and Photoshop a lot and you start doing the Save As option um, multiple times on the same photo in Photoshop, sometimes those subsequent saves don't make it back into Lightroom for some reason. I think it's a bit of a, a glitch. And so the way you fix that is the synchronize folder option. And you can synchronize just one folder or you can synchronize your entire catalog if it's under a parent folder. So like right here, I've got eight, eight uh, images here. I could just synchronize this or these eight images are within a 2019 folder and I could synchronize that and that'll synchronize every single folder underneath it. I could even go to my parent folder, which is my entire catalog, and synchronize that. So there's two ways to do it. You can either control click, uh, right click on a PC, and then choose synchronize folder, or you can come up to library and choose synchronize folder. So I'll do it this way. And this is one of those things, if you're synchronizing your entire catalog, it's gonna take a while. If it's just a folder with maybe 10, 20, 100 images, it should go pretty quickly. Um, I like to check import new photos and show import dialog before importing. That way I can see exactly what I'm importing, just as if I plugged in a, say, um, an SD card or a flash card. 
So I'm gonna click synchronize, and it's probably gonna take a minute here to load. You'll see the little progress bar on the left-hand side. And I'll fast forward. Now you can see the import dialog has popped up. By default, all the images are checked. You could uncheck all down here in the lower left corner, or you can just leave them checked. Or you can just select the ones that you want. All the photos that show up here are photos that are on my hard drive, but not currently in my catalog. So I'm gonna go ahead and click import because I wanna sync my entire hard drive with my catalog. The progress bar will pop up on the left-hand side and once this finishes, your catalog and your hard drive will be in sync. Looks like I have a corrupted file here. Um, so this file I probably will not be able to use. It's a TIFF file, so something must have happened. Maybe Photoshop crashed when I created it or saved it. Um, but this is just Lightroom's way of saying that it can't be used. And so I'm going to press OK. And now my catalog is synced. The next feature I'm about to explain only pertains to portrait photographers. Sometimes portrait photographers might take an image of somebody and when they see it, they might not think that it looks like them. And the reason for that is because they're used to looking at a mirror which flips their face around. So Lightroom has actually accounted for that. If you go to View and Enable Mirror Image Mode, it will simply flip your images. Now if I go back out to the grid view, you'll notice it flipped all of my images. So if I want to get back, uncheck, and they all flip back to the original view. Now if I were to export one of these, even in Mirror Image Mode, they would still come out looking like you see them now. Um, you can't export the mirrored image. If you want to do something like that, you would have to hop over into Photoshop. In this section, we're going to discuss quick collections and target collections in the library module. So you notice if I take my cursor and hover over a photo, you'll see this little circle appear in the top right hand corner. When I click on that, that adds this photo to my quick collection. The B key is the keyboard shortcut. So if I come to this photo and press B, you'll notice that also gets added to my quick collection. And we can add multiple photos at a time. To do so, click your first photo and then hold Command or Control on a PC and start selecting the other photos that you'd like to add. And we'll add these two as well. Now to add all these at the same time, all I have to do is press the B key and there they are in my quick collection. To view the quick collection, just simply click on it. And there's my photos. If I'd like to remove a photo, I can press B and they'll disappear. And right now I have a lot selected. So if I hit B, they all disappear at the same time. So I'm going to undo that. In order to select just one, I'm going to click outside of the, the photo frame right here. And if I, let's say I want to delete yeah, maybe this one. There it goes. Now I didn't delete it from the hard drive, it just deleted it from the quick collection. So why would you want to create a quick collection? There's a couple of different reasons. Maybe you want to show some, your, some of your best photos to your client, or you want to export some photos to the web, or maybe you just want to work on these photos a little bit later on and they're in different folders and you want them kind of all to be in the same place. So that's a, any of those reasons would be a good excuse to create a quick collection. If you'd like to save the quick collection, all you have to do is control click or right click on a PC and choose save quick collection. And we'll give this a name, we'll call it web. And if I leave this box checked, it's going to completely clear out my quick collection and I can start adding more photos to a new quick collection. And I think that's what I want. So we'll go ahead and choose save. And you'll notice the quick collection zeroed out. And when I come down here to web, there's all of my photos and they're no longer have that little circle marked because they're in a permanent collection down here in my collections. I can also choose any collection that I have down here as a target collection. So maybe I have this images for review folder and maybe I want to make this my target collection. So to do so, I would control click and set as target collection. And when I do that, you'll see this little plus sign up here. That means anytime I press the B key or hit one of these circles, it's going to come into this images for review. So if I start taking a few of these, 
There we go, we've got four images in our images for review. Now, if I want to change this back to my quick collection up here in the catalog, it's very easy to do. All I have to do is control click or right click on a PC and set as target collection. And now my quick collection is back to the default. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a new trick or two along the way. If you'd like to learn more, watch Lightroom Secrets Revealed Part 2, the develop module. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit naturemike.com for more tips and tricks to help you out along your photographic journey.